Hello Vinyl community. Today I'd like to talk about two groups that were popular in the 60s and they had their own TV shows, both groups, and they are the Monkees and the Partridge Family. When I start, the first thing I'm going to show though is an album by Boyce and Hart on A&M Records and the question is why show Boyce and Hart LP when you're talking about the Monkees and the Partridge Family. And the reason for that is because these two guys wrote most of the songs for the Monkees and did some work with the Partridge family. They of course had their own hits, their own album, like this one here, I wonder what she's doing tonight, it was a big success there in the 60s. Uh, a bit of trivia, Boyce and Hart also appears on an episode of Bewitched starring Elizabeth Montgomery. If you ever are a Boyce and Hart fan, you can look for that. So the Monkees were uh, sort of like a, a bunch of actors playing uh, the role of a band on a TV series which ran from 1965 and I think it was to 1968 if I'm right and um, they put out the first album called The Monkees. All their albums are out on RCA Cold Gems. And when you look at the back, the credits, it just names the four members of the band. So it would give you the impression that it was the monkeys that were writing all the songs, playing all the instruments, and recording their album, which of course was not the case. That was being done by the Wrecking Crew, which were the session musicians in LA during the 60s. So it was that group that was um, doing most of the music, and eventually got leaked out to the public. And there was quite a backlash that um, the monkeys were pretending to be a band when in fact they're not and uh, there was some pushback from the band themselves saying no we are actors actors playing the role of a band we are not a band who got their own tv show and so they continue to put out uh, records and it continued to be controversy that first record i just showed you the monkeys did go to number one on the billboard top 200 that was released in 1966 and that 1967 came more of the monkeys that also went to number one on the billboard top 200 and on this one well we did mention voice and heart of course as being sort of like producers of the the um the songs on on the lp but you don't see much in the way of other credits you still get the impression it is uh, the monkeys that were doing everything so by the time the third record came around in 1967 called Headquarters, we now begin to see on the back credits being applied to people who were part of the, um, the wrecking crew and that, such as uh, Chip Douglas on bass. And also by this point, the Monkees now are playing some of their instruments and are getting involved with writing some of the music as well. This also went to number one on the uh, Billboard Top 200. Should just quickly mention that uh, on the first album, of course, there on that one, there was The Last Train to Clarksville and Hey Hey Where the Monkeys were two of the big hits on the radio. And then on the second album, a couple of the big hits there Mary Mary, Step in Stone, I'm a Believer. On this particular one, um, from where I grew up when I was a kid, I can't recall any of these songs actually being played on the radio. I might have missed them, I was pretty young at the time. But the record did go to number one on the US Billboard. The next album that came out in 1967, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn and Jones. By now, the personnel includes everybody pretty much working on the album. So you've got the members of the um, Wrecking Crew showing up there in the uh, in the credits for the album. The next one up, The Birds, The Bees, and The Monkeys is also 1968, I believe. And um, Again, we see the monkeys starting to write some more of their own music as well as playing their instruments.
Next one is something completely different for the monkeys. It was a soundtrack to the movie Head. Frank Zappa appears in, involved with this album. Jack Nicholson, the actor, sort of one of the producers, and also was sort of the producer of the soundtrack. This is starting to get a little bit psychedelic. And then this, um, if you listen to this, they actually uh, poke a bit of fun at themselves in the fact that how they got a lot of uh, negative feedback in our early days as being actors and not musicians. So I had only finished at number 45 on the Billboard US Top 200. Next album, The Monkey's Instant Replay, came out in 1969. And by now, Peter Tork has left the band. Peter Tork went wanted out of the band with three years left on his contract. The cost was 150000 per year, so that cost him 400000 to get out of his contract. Then the next album, in 1970, we see another member leaving. And so all we have left now is Davy Jones and uh, Mickey Jones. I knew I would forget his name. There are only the last two left. That This one uh, topped out at 100 on the US uh, 200 billboard chart. And so by now, at this point, the uh, group was down to only two members. They were losing a lot of the popularity, weren't selling records as much. And so that was pretty much the end of the phase one of their career. They did do some reunion stuff and albums like that down the, down the road later. They were still under contract though to do some TV work. They were supposed to do commercials for Kool-Aid with Bugs Bunny and post serial commercials uh, that they were under obligation which I'm sure they did. But that was pretty much it for the monkeys. So the Partridge family is next. Partridge family, uh, they got started around, um, I think it was 1970 and a TV show rant about 1974 on the ABC network. I read that the show was loosely based on the family of the Calcios, so don't know much about the Calcios, don't know if that's uh, true or not. Three major uh, individuals in that uh, group was uh, Shirley Jones, who played the mother, and she's the Academy Award winner as Best Supporting Actress, who received the Academy Award in 1958, I think. Uh, of course, and there's David Cassidy, who was played the oldest son. And during the recording of the first album, it was discovered that he could actually sing. And so he started being given the lead vocal parts um, from that point on. The third individual on there, who now I should say Shirley Jones and David Cassidy, were the only two ever involved in this recording studio for these albums. Uh, the rest of the uh, cast was mostly just actors. Uh, the third actor, the one playing the eldest daughter, Susan Day, of course would go on to star in L.A. Law, so she had quite a successful career in television herself. The first album, as I just showed, uh, The Partridge Family, came out. Uh, 1970 and reached number four on the US Billboard charts. And as a jury recording album, they discovered that David Cassidy could sing, and so from that point on, David Cassidy uh, was doing the most of the vocal work. The next album is Up to Date which came out in 1971. I should mention that all these uh, records are released on the label Bell. This reached number three on the Billboard charts. I think it was after the um, first album, there was a personnel change. Uh, the youngest boy, who was the drummer, I think, and they changed him. The original actor had trouble getting along with the rest of the crew uh, cast. Third album, Sound Magazine, came out in 1971, reached number nine on the US uh, top 200 billboard charts. Um, the only track that I think really, really did well on AM radio was off the 
the very first album, um, I Think I Love You, which I believe did go to number one on, on the singles charts. Then the next album to come out is the uh, Partridge Family Christmas card, which did reach a number one on the um, Billboard. And, and in this one, uh, it's the first time that Shirley Jones is featured as a lead singer. She did one uh, lead singer on one of the tracks. And it comes with a, if you open up, there's a Christmas card with a picture of the family on there. The next album to come out in 1972 is Shopping Bag. And it reached number, I think it was 18 on the charts. So on uh, this one, it actually, of course, came with a shopping bag. Next album to come out in 1972, Notebook, made to look like a, a textbook that you would use in school with the binder holes, the, the red margin, the link, and the information given on the back here. And Notebook reached number 41 on the charts. The next album to come out was Crossword. So there's a crossword puzzle on the cover and I believe it says right on the cover crossword puzzle answers inside album when I got this album out of the flea market it was still sealed never been opened yet when I looked inside I did not find any answers to that crossword puzzle and also at the same flea market about a year later I came across another copy of this album where the, the crossword had been completed by the original owner. And even though it was in the dollar bin, I said, nah, I've already got a copy. I'm not going to buy another copy just to get the answers to a crossword that I'm never going to do. Uh, one, this one ended up at 167 on the US Billboard charts. The very last um, album put out, Billboard. This came out in 1973. And this album did not chart. By now the show was running its course and I guess the popularity of the group was ending. Should I mention, as I said at the very start of the video, that Voice and Heart did a lot of the writing for the, this group as, it, as did a number of other people. Um, trying to thank some of the other people that might have uh, worked did some of the uh, um, recording. Paul Anka wrote some of their songs, I know. But um, as time went on, uh, David Cassidy started doing his own writing as well. And through some of these later albums, you'll see that the songs were written by uh, David Cassidy. And then, of course, David Cassidy would go on to do his solo albums, which I don't have any of. So that's uh, pretty much. Um, a rundown on the monkeys and the partridge family. Thanks very much for watching.